Beer at Home is back with us, continuing a discussion from last week, understanding the top fears of aging. Um, and I know one of the things that you were beginning to cover uh, last week was the death of a spouse. And that can be tough, particularly or, or on any, you know, couple. But I think about those couples that have known each other since uh, elementary school, maybe yeah. younger. That's, that's someone you've been with your whole life. Yeah, and so us talking about these things, it's a way for you to be able to open up and talk to your older uh, children or if you're talking to your parents about it, just to start conversation. So this is one of the top fears for the mm -hmm. elderly, especially as you say, if they've known each other from when they were very young mm -hmm. and they grew up together and they formed this real symbol biotic relationship where perhaps some one person has dementia and they need some help in the cognitive area and the other needs some physical mm -hmm. assistance. So their fear is if their spouse dies, then they're going to lose their independence. They're going to have to move on. Mm -hmm. So really planning in advance and having those conversations beforehand is important. Yeah. Uh, another fear, the inability to manage their own daily activities, which I know you've touched on as well in terms of maybe someone handles finances or, you know, other aspects aspects of, the, of the, their life. Yeah, and they're, they're fearful that they're not able to do these things, so they're really losing all of their independence. So they'll try to uh, cover it up in different ways, but really uh, being open because there are there's a plan for everything. Mm -hmm. So just being able to be open with your family and say, I just need a little bit of help in this area, and you'd be able to keep as much independence as possible mm -hmm. and just have people fill in with where you're um, just lacking a little bit. Yeah, not being able to drive a big one. Yeah, this is a huge one, but it again, it doesn't need to be that you're losing your independence. Mm -hmm. If you have some assistance, say through our company, through Happier at Home, have someone driving you. And so it doesn't mean that you have to stop life as mm -hmm. is, that you could still go to your appointments. You could still go to the mall and go shopping, go out to lunch uh, and just have some assistance. You could use Uber nowadays and there are a lot of different ways to yeah. help. Uh, just supplement that. I think about this myself, um, you know, and I'm into my in my 30s, but fear of being alone and, and loneliness and that settling in. And I think that's a, something that a lot of um, the older adults maybe think about um, as they're as they've lost friends or spouse. Yeah, losing their friends. I mean, as we get older, then it just happens more and more. So being able to voice that find different activities that you can do outside of your home, even if it is having a family member taking you out, uh, having phone calls, getting involved with the community and your church, that type of thing is yeah. really helpful. Yeah, um, abuse and neglect. Um, this is also uh, a big topic too. Mm -hmm. um, what should people advocate for and, and think about when it comes to this topic? Well. People that are the victims of abuse are really afraid to talk about it because they that person who is abusing them usually is someone who, who's close to them. Mm -hmm. So if they bring it up to one person, the fear is that the abuse will get worse or that as a result of telling the, someone about it that they have to move out of their home. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it is best not to confront the abuser themselves, but to contact your adult protectives. And this is what they deal with, helping to work through that. Because if it is abuse that's as a result of a caregiver being overstressed, maybe that caregiver just needs to be able to pull, be pulled back for a bit, uh, go through some counseling themselves, and have other supports to help care for your uh, older loved one. Mm -hmm. um, fear of falling. We've talked about some of these hazards when, we, when we've addressed aging in place. Yeah. So this is a fear that people, that, that, that's common. It is, and it's valid uh, because so many people are losing their balance. And if they have fear of falling and they're worried about balance, then they will not move, which then compounds your problem. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you are proactive with uh, both keeping moving, exercising, physical therapy, have a home physical therapy program, mm -hmm. but also look at uh, some adaptive measures like grab bars, mm -hmm. uh, ramps and things like that. Sure. But please don't stop moving. Yeah, you know? it, it sounds like you, you're getting people to address their fears 
um, advocate for themselves so they're not frozen in fear and finding out solutions so that they can live their best life. That's right. really the goal this here. This is the big push and that's what we all want. Keep you at home and independent and, and there are ways to do that. All right. Thank you, yeah. Deb, for your time.